Hello and welcome to this um, update, which will help you with theme one primarily. You'll see some of the links to the other themes, theme one primarily of your um, BFI geography program. And it's about maritime areas and it's a little update on some of the areas of maritime conflict across the globe in 2024. Um, and particularly looking at the fact that there feels to be growing political tension. This is inspired by an article in The Economist called Gun Boat Diplomacy uh, from earlier in the year. Um, and talking about the influence that sea power and sea conflict is having on global geopolitics. So we're going to try and give you a little whistle-stop tour of some of the main hotspots so that you could maybe refer to them in orals or in written um, exams, but obviously in a little bit more detail. <clears throat> First of all, I think it's worth highlighting the global geopolitical risk at the moment. If you were to look at a map of geographical hotspots, you would see the area shaded in blue. The US, obviously, with the election coming up, there's a potential there for issues to develop. And then across Russia, China, Iran in the Middle East and across the Sahel area of um, a central uh, African continent. Now, what I want to focus on here is, as you can see, that there is some distinct correlations. First of all, a correlation between the areas in blue <clears throat> and um, Africa aside, global maritime trade, which can be shown in the map at the top right-hand corner. And then also, interestingly, um, the link to global governance, you can see down in the map in the bottom right-hand corner, um, the BRICS country shaded in orange big correlation there and also the BRICS expansion which is the um, areas in yellow and you can see they also coincide with areas of geopolitical conflict so there's quite a few things come together here um, there's the general maritime patterns there's as we've seen in theme two of your geography course looking at global governance there is a link between global governance emerging countries emerging areas new patterns of global governance and geopolitical conflict and risk. So if we were to first of all start with Europe, um, as you can see in Europe, we've got issues with Ukraine and you wouldn't immediately feel that that would have a maritime consequence. Um, but this is because of the Black Sea, the ongoing war in Ukraine has brought attention to the strategic importance of this particular body of water. We know that Russia has laid mines um, in Ukrainian waters and target car targeted cargo ships leaving Ukrainian ports like Odessa. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to cut off the exit through the Bosphorus down in Turkey and out into global markets and global international um, trade routes. So control of the Black Sea is crucial for military and also for economic reasons. And this conflict actually shows you how the sea um, and maritime areas can become areas of conflict, both contributing to and as a result of conflict on land. We also know, of course, that if you move to the Middle East and the Red Sea, that this area has recently seen increasing uh, tension due to the actions of the Houthi rebel group. Houthis have been targeting commercial um, shipping routes, threatening valuable supply chains. Um, and particularly at the start of the year, they launched airstrikes on many um, British... Uh, American um, uh, shipping and the British and Americans responded in kind with attacks on Houthi rebel bases. Um, it's obviously important to try to keep the Bab al-Mandab Strait free for shipping. Um, the Red Sea is not just a stretch of water, it's a vital artery um, leading up to the Suez Canal. And disruption here could be devastating. Um, for international trade. So this is just a lot more than just a global issue. This is a huge impact on a major uh, choke point. Also in the Middle East, we move across to Iran um, and the Strait of Hormuz. The Strait of Hormuz, another important maritime choke point, um, narrow waterway between the Persian Gulf uh, and the Arabian Sea. Um, around 20% of all the world's oil supply passes through here. And any, again, any disruption here could impact global economic markets. And Iran has previously threatened to close the strait. As you can see from the map on the left, Iran uh, as a Shia Muslim state and uh, Saudi Arabia and other Sunni Muslim areas around there are in a, uh, have been in a conflict for a long, long time. 
Um, as we know, this has spilled over into Israel, Gaza, the West Bank, um, Lebanon. And there's a huge regional um, conflict going on in the area through proxy wars and, and proxy conflicts. So Iran's control over the Strait of Hormuz could have an impact on countries around it and also on the global economy. But one of the things everyone's kind of... Uh, always held on to is the fact that shutting the Strait of Hormuz would be like shutting a main artery to Iran as well, which is why there's consternation and concern over um, a building of a new oil pipeline that the Iranians look like they're constructing, as you can see on the map on the right, which would mean that they would be able to get oil out of places like Bandar and Chabahar further down the coast, whilst also being able to close the Strait of Hormuz and choking exports from countries such as the UAE, Kuwait, um, Qatar, uh, Iraq, <clears throat> and again, ratcheting up tension, not just in the area, but also in the global economy. So the Iran and the Strait of Hormuz is going to play a huge influence. We then move to the South China Sea, an area that we are well aware of from our studies of history. Uh, um, when we start looking at our BFI history course, as well as when we look at maritime areas, we also look at areas of maritime conflict. Um, it's one of the most contested maritime areas in the world. China claims vast swathes of this sea, but their activities have raised alarm all across Asia. It's not only rich in resources like oil and natural gas, but as we know, it's also a vital passageway for global trade. And approximately one third of all global trade passes through um, this region. And we know that Taiwan and Taiwanese um, independence and Taiwan's role that it plays in the history of the modern Chinese state means that China has long laid claims over Taiwan. You can see on the map on the left there um, some of the increase in kind of military activity there has been in the area and the range of much of the Chinese um, ordnance that they're able to launch places Taiwan under a huge amount of threat. And it's extremely important, the, the South China Sea and Taiwan, to global international trade. So we can see here that China also, as we know, has a huge, huge influence um, globally. And one of the things that the Chinese uh, state is trying to do is thinking about its naval power and its influence on the global economy. Um, China's expanded its naval capabilities significantly in recent years. Um, its People's Liberation Army Navy, the plan as it's known, is now the world's largest uh, and it's building aircraft carriers, submarines, advanced warships, and it's making strategic partnerships all over the world. As you can see <clears throat> from Vanuatu through Pakistan, Equatorial Guinea, Solomon Islands, Africa, Central America, and trying to um, increase its control and its grip on global maritime trade which is, we know, as we've just seen, is so, so important to China and to its economy. And to give you, uh, again, a link to global governance, we can now see if we look at naval fleets that in 2023, uh, China um, took over from the United States as the largest on the planet, Russia, in third place. And you can see other allies of the U.S., uh, Japan, South Korea, France and Britain making a significant contribution there to balancing this global power. But again, when we link to global governance, we can see that the hard power um, of many of these um, emerging nations is, uh, is posing a significant um, challenge to the existing global economic order. One of the things that's increasing significance also in terms of maritime conflicts is not what's just on the waves, but it's also what's under the waves. Um, and it's a key uh, feature of maritime conflict. It, conflict sorry, is it's complex to the oceans are not just highways for trade, but the home to critical infrastructure. 97% of all global internet traffic relies on cable networks, such as the ones you can see on the screen. <clears throat> there have been recent incidents, um, Estonia, Finland, Sweden in 2023, where undersea cables were cut. Um, we saw the destruction of the Nord Stream pipeline in 2022, which was linked to the Ukrainian conflict, an unknown state actor responsible for that. But it dem demonstrates how underwater infrastructure is also important in creating or mitigating modern conflict. And these incidents uh, clearly show how 
maritime conflicts are increasingly spilling over um, into other areas. <clears throat> and we need to talk about what, therefore, the future might look like. Like, And there has been an increasing um, investment in USVs, um, the rise of new technologies like uncrewed surface vehicles. These USVs, um, or drone ships, if you like, is reshaping naval warfare and mine vessels such as these being used for reconnaissance and increasingly for offensive um, operations. We're now seeing them being used extensively in the war between Russia and Ukraine. We've seen the Houthi rebels using them also to attack warships. And what this is doing is, this is kind of, for want of a better word, democratising, if you like, maritime conflict, where we saw those graphs before of huge state investment, but actually smaller states, smaller groups, are now able to have significant impact in maritime conflict through the development of USV. So to go full cycle, we come back to some of these areas of geopolitical risk on the planet. We come back to the link to maritime trade, which is still so essential um, to all of us. And we also keep an eye on global governance as we see many of these emerging nations be nations located in areas of in maritime importance and also areas of increasing uh, increasing geopolitical risk okay thank you very much